Good evening, everyone. I'm going to turn things over to Judy Meyer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fall Candidates Forum brought to you by a collaboration with the Sun Journal, the Auburn and Lewiston Public Libraries, and the LA Metro Chamber of Commerce. I'm Judy Meyer, editor of the Sun Journal. We are beginning our evening tonight with the Auburn candidates, and we just want to explain a little bit about how we reached out and what the response process was. Upon receipt of the official list from the city clerk's office, which named all candidates who had completed necessary paperwork, we shared an invitation to tonight's forum. One week later, a second reminder invitation was sent, followed by phone calls to all non-responsive candidates. Every effort was made by the organizers of tonight's event to include candidates on file. Those who had registered as writing candidates by September 20th were also invited. For our format, we will begin with the mayoral race in each city, move to the city council races, and end with the school committee races. The orders of candidates will begin with Ward 1, alphabetically by last name. This will be followed for each ward with at-large candidates going last. The format will be repeated within each race. Each candidate will have 1.5 minutes, otherwise known as 90 seconds, to introduce themselves, then 30 seconds to respond to our first question, and one minute to respond to the second question. And candidates, please, I just want to remind you that you are unmute yourself before you begin speaking. To ensure that we hear from all candidates tonight, we will strictly adhere to the clock. You and your candidates will see the timer and will be muted should you go over. No questions were provided to the candidates in advance, and we did not accept any recordings of any nature. Everyone you see here tonight is live. So we're gonna go over the ground rules just very quickly so I, our audience knows what to expect. And I think we have a slide on this, uh, Strawberry. So the ground rules were established to support our common purpose, which is for citizens and business owners of Auburn and Lewiston to have an opportunity to learn about the people who are hoping to lead our communities. These are ground rules based on the American Bar Association's rules for ensuring a civil conversation, and they are as follows. Show respect for the views expressed by others, even if you strongly disagree. Be brief, stick to the time allotted, in your comments so that all who wish to speak have a chance to express their views. Direct your comments to the group as a whole rather than to one any individual. Please don't let disagreements or conflicting views become personal. Name calling and shouting are not acceptable ways of conversing with others. Let others express their views without interruption and please let your monitor and your moderator will ensure that everyone has a chance to speak. Due to time restraints, we do not have time for rebuttals or responses to other comments. Should you choose to use your allotted time to respond to comments as well as to the question we have asked, you certainly may, but we will keep the clock going. So at this point, it is my pleasure to introduce Shanna Cox, who is president and CEO of the Lewiston Auburn Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. She will moderate the first portion of our forum, starting with the Auburn mayoral candidate. Thank you so much, Judy. Uh, Judy, and thank you so much for all of you for attending tonight. Uh, our first race this evening um, is the Auburn mayoral race. Mayor Jason Levesque, who is not able to join us tonight, is running unopposed. We'll also now move to the city council uh, introductions. Um, first, I'd like to welcome all of the candidates for city council tonight. They're going to each introduce themselves. They will have 90 seconds to introduce share their vision, priorities, or plans. This is one final reminder to each of the candidates to unmute yourself before you begin speaking. First, from Ward 1, we have Eric Gould. Welcome, Eric. Hi. Can you hear me? We can. All right. Hi, my name is Eric Gould. I am a graduate of Edward Little High School and Maine Maritime Academy. I spent the last 10 years as a chief engineer on a U.S. flag merchant vessel. Much of that time, the vessel traded in the Indian Ocean, delivering containers and U.S. food aid to East Africa. I was required to keep the vessel operating, operational within a budget, all while keeping on schedule. I recently retired to spend more time focusing on my family and my community. My wife and I are raising our three young boys here in West Auburn. My wife is a registered nurse. I want to serve this ward by using my experiences to keep taxes in checks and focus on smart growth and education. The main problem I see is growing traffic and speed on our neighborhood, leading to bad roads and dangerous conditions. 
I'm an avid runner, outdoorsman, using the many miles of trails that Auburn and surrounding communities have to offer. I'm excited about connecting various communities with trails and serving Ward 1 on the City Council. Best wishes to everyone running for an election and may you have a healthy and eventful season. Thanks. Thank you so much, Eric. I appreciate that. That was Ward 1 candidate Eric Gould. And now we'll introduce Richard Whiting also from Ward 1. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I'm Rick Whiting. I uh, have lived in Auburn for most of my life. I moved here when I was 10 days old. So unfortunately, I'm not a native, but close. Um, I was a graduate of Edward Little High School, played on the state championship football team, mostly on the bench. Uh, went to Harvard College, graduated cum laude, uh, worked a couple of years for Depositors Trust, and then came back to Auburn to work for Auburn Housing Authority. Um, I was the executive director for many years. Um, I uh, <clears throat> worked closely with Healthy Andrew Scoggin on uh, smoke-free housing. We were the third housing authority in the country to go smoke-free and help lead a movement to make all hot assisted housing smoke-free. And a lot of the public housing is now smoke-free, uh, uh, private housing is smoke-free as well. Um, I've lived or worked in every ward of the city of Auburn. Uh, I have uh, served on the Auburn Planning Board, the Zoning Board of Appeals, I was president of Auburn Public Library. I was chairman of the uh, building campaign where we renovated and expanded the Auburn Public Library. I was co-chair of the uh, comprehensive plan in 2010. I served on the Auburn Water District Board. Um, I was on the boards of Northern New England Housing Investment Fund, uh, Maine Affordable Housing Coalition, and the Auburn Housing Development Corp. Um, I'm on the PAL Center board now, as well as on the advisory committee of Healthy Andrew Scoggin. Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Our Ward 2 candidates will begin this evening with Ryan House. Welcome, Ryan. Hi there, everyone. So I'm Ryan Hawes. I know that's a common mistake. That's all right. Um, so. I'm originally from, uh, from Farmington, Maine. Don't hold that against me. Um, I'm actually lucky enough to call Auburn my home for the, for the last 15 years. Um, I graduated college from here. I bought my first home. Uh, I met my wife a month after coming back from my deployment to Afghanistan. I did spend six years in the Marine Corps. Um, and uh, I'm very thankful and blessed for my time there. And I feel that I've I've definitely served my country, but now I want to serve the community that I live in as well. I'm extremely motivated, disciplined, and uh, I love to listen to both sides of any story before I even start to make a judgment. Um, currently, I'm a vice president of, of a credit union or a financial institution. So when other people say that they have been in banking, I, I feel it. And uh, I think the, the biggest thing is I want to help my community I also wanna help on the education side. I wanna make sure that our students have what they need to be successful. I also wanna make sure that our businesses are not being pushed down or pushed out. I wanna make sure that they have what they need to be successful as well. And I also wanna bring other people here to our location to showcase what a loving and supporting community that we have and grow that person by person. And that's why I'm running in Ward 2. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, and I appreciate your correction on your name. Names are important. Um, next for our Ward 2 candidate for City Council is Timothy McLeod. Welcome, Timothy, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Timothy McLeod. I have lived in Auburn uh, my entire life. I graduated from Edward Little. Um, I'm rerunning for election to continue the work that I think our City Council has started on to bring more people into Auburn to focus the growth in the places where we can have it and to maintain the beauty that Auburn has and, and what I feel keeps people here and draws people in. Um, I live in Ward 2 with my wife and my daughter. 
So we've just entered the school system. So that's a whole nother uh, area of concern that we're starting in on. Um, beyond that, I, I wanna continue to connect the trails that we have. Auburn is a, a city of neighborhoods and we really need to look at connecting everybody together so that we can get from one place to another and, and not have the, the fracture that we have now between all of the different locations. Thank you very much, Councillor McLeod. We appreciate that. Uh, for Ward 3, we have uh, Councillor Stephen Milks, who is running unopposed and declined to attend tonight. We also have Joseph Morin, who is running unopposed for Ward 4, whom we did not receive a response from. <clears throat> Next, we have from Ward 5, uh, Joseph Damata, who is a write-in candidate. Welcome. Good evening, Joseph. Joe, I, I apologize, you are muted. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's try again. Um, thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm, I'm Joe Damata. I'm actually, um, I grew up here in New Auburn, up, um, over on Gill Street, actually. Um, my dad was actually a Lewiston police, the Lewiston cop, and, and my mom a stay-at-home mom. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I really got into this. I just recently bought a house in the last couple of years with my fiance up, up here in New Auburn again. So I'm kind of coming back home. Um, and, you know, um, one of the, one of the things that you're going to hear me talk a lot, a lot about is um, education. I work for the University of Maine in Augusta, the Lewiston Center. Um, and so I work very, very closely with students who are coming out, um, who are coming back to me kind of as adult students. And so education is super, super important to me. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I think about a lot is just kind of giving back. You know, I really, um, this community has really done a lot for me and my, and my family. And I really feel like now is the time to, to kind of give back, right? Um, and so, I, you know, um, I, I work with people kind of from all walks of life, um, from all over the place. And so um, I'm, I really look forward to kind of helping in that area. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, I just, I'm really, really interested in kind of helping the community and kind of giving back and, and kind of seeing where we can go from there. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it. Uh, our next um, candidate from Ward 5 is Kathy Shaw, who is also a write-in candidate. Welcome, Kathy. Good evening. Thank you so much for inviting me to attend. Um, I am a lifelong farmer, gardener, small business owner. I've lived in Auburn since the early 90s in the farmhouse and farm that we currently operate as a fairly successful business. I'm a familiar face to lots of folks in the neighborhood and throughout the city. Um, I have been an active participant in the United New Auburn Association. I am currently the chair of the Auburn Agricultural and Forestry Committee. I've been president of three different farmers markets I was a vendor at the Lewiston Market and also helped organize the Auburn Farmers Market that we're hoping to um, revive. I'm currently serving as a supervisor for the Soil and Water Conservation District. So the outdoors and what Auburn has to offer is very important to me. Also what's very important to me is that I firmly believe that people in our city deserve the opportunity to have a choice of candidates. And I appreciate Mr. Damata coming as a write-in. I work very closely on lots of different activities with Leroy Walker. He's been a great member of our community, but I also think that it might be time for us to have a little bit of a change in some of our representation. Thank you so much, Kathy. And I would add that there is a third candidate for Auburn City Council in Ward 5, and that is Leroy Walker who was unable to join us tonight. He had other plans. Uh, next, we're gonna turn to our at-large candidates for Auburn City Council. Um, first, we'll hear from uh, current Councillor Belinda Gary. Welcome, Belinda. Thank you very much. Did I unmute you, me all right? Thank you. Again, my name is Belinda Gary. I'm one of Auburn City Councilors at large. Auburn is my home, and I'm a lifelong resident here. Some of my accomplishments as a city councilor 
was the, was the creation and expansion of our senior community center, where activities and meals are put on for seniors and establishing our community gardens and our food and security programs. Currently, I help deliver grab and go groceries to senior citizens. Projects I would like to see continue to work on if I can get privileged to be reelected are the expansion of our PAL Center and their programs. I would like to prevent any form of swimming in Lake Auburn, our drinking water, and fixing our outlet beach and water for swimming. I also want to keep our taxes affordable while providing city services that we are in need of. I respectfully ask for your vote this come November, and please allow me to continue to serve all Auburn residents equitably, fairly, and honestly. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Belinda. Uh, we were expecting um, at-large candidate James Lashua to join us, who has not yet arrived. We'll be keeping an eye out for him during the Q&A portion. And so with that, I would welcome Dana Staples. Dana, uh, welcome and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me and thank you for hosting this event. My name is Dana Staples. I am running for Auburn City Council at large. I grew up in Maine and mine it. I graduated from Edward Little High School. I have a bachelor's degree from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York in computer science. I have a master's in University of Southern Maine in computer science. After I graduated from college, I, I moved back to Auburn uh, just because I knew it was an awesome place to live and I really wanted to live here. I got a little bit interested in politics and I realized pretty quickly that at, at the local level, you can really make a big impact. And so I decided to start volunteering for the city of Auburn. I've served on the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, Auburn's Zoning Board of Appeals, the Lewis and Auburn Complete Streets Committee. I served on the Auburn Strategic Planning Committee. And most recently, I'm a member of the Planning Board and the chair of the 2020 Comp Plan Committee. I look forward to continuing some of the work that I've done in my committees as a potential member of the Auburn City Council. I think in general, uh, you'll find that I research what I have to, what I have to learn. I, I read all of the agenda packets. I make sure that I understand the issues. And I think that if I am elected, you'll understand why, am I, why I'm voting the way I do. Thank you. And I appreciate the, the vote on November 2nd. Thank you so much, Dana. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we just finished introductions to our Auburn City Council candidates. And we're gonna move into the Q&A portion of our evening. Our first question, as a reminder for our candidates, you'll have 30 seconds to answer. It is meant to be a quick response. Um, and the question will arrive on your screen in just a moment. We're going to run through the, the participants in the same order that we just did. And here is your question. Given recent divisive behavior at times within our city councils and school boards, how do you envision being able to work together for the overall benefit of our communities? Our first respondee tonight will be Eric Gould. Welcome, Eric. Hi, thanks. I think I take a pretty level-headed approach when it comes to most things, and you know, it takes a lot to really get me riled up. So I feel like, you know, drawing from my experiences and you know, leadership capabilities, I, I feel like I'd be a good candidate for the city of Auburn. I think I'd represent the citizens well. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for modeling concise answers too. We appreciate that. Richard Whiting, the question now returns to you and remains on your screen as a reminder. Please do unmute yourself. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much. I, uh, I neglected to thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the two libraries as well as the Sun Journal earlier. Um, I think that people can get along together if they just respect each other. And I, I've worked on many boards and very few of those boards have we had a lot of uh, disagreements. We, I think if people take the high road, we can all get along and get things accomplished together. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. 
Uh, Ryan, we now turn to you. I'm not going to mispronounce your last name twice. Welcome and a reminder to unmute yourself. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So I really think it comes down to open communication. I mean, people need to really express their views and they need to be honest with their views and other people need to be able to listen without judgment. And I see, I think that's the reason we're having the divisiveness coming through it is because everybody thinks their idea is right without listening to the other side. So we really truly need to take a different approach and listen more than we are trying to push opinions. And I think that'll help bring us together if we're all on the same page. Thank you, we appreciate that, Ryan. Welcome. Councillor McLeod. It looks like he may have dropped off. Okay, thank you. We'll turn now to Joe Damata. Joe, the question remains on the screen for you. And as a reminder, please do unmute. So, um, you know, for me, and, and I think that I'm going to kind of mirror what everyone said so far in, the, in that with the idea of, of, you know, it does come down to being able to communicate, but it's okay to disagree, you know, it's, it's okay to, to not to not to not have the same viewpoints and that's perfectly acceptable. I think it, it comes down though to, to being respectful to each other and being able to sit down and, and kind of really try to understand each other's view. And I think from there, that's, that's when we can kind of learn and grow and kind of come to, to, to whatever, whatever, whatever point that we need to come to. Thank you, Joe. And in time, we appreciate that. Kathy, uh, Kathy Shaw from Word 5, it's now your opportunity to respond to the question on the screen. Thank you for this question. I think it's an important topic that needs uh, further discussion and analyzing. I think that we all need to find a common ground and that dissemination of information is an important aspect of what has not necessarily happened. Um, I think that we are all working towards the betterment of our city, our residents and our schools, and we just need to listen and stop making the judgment calls that so many have been making. Thank you so much, Kathy. Councillor Gary, welcome back. You're great and live. So I'm, not, I'm muted, unmuted. Okay, thank you. For me, it's being honest and open, doing our homework, acting respectively, civilly, and not taking anything personally. In other words, once you hear something, if it stings or hurts, let it go. Don't hold on to it. Don't grudge. And you got to listen without any distractions. You gotta pay attention to what's going on because sometimes you catch something, you don't always catch everything. Thank you so much, Councillor Gary. Uh, we'll turn to James Lashua if he's had the opportunity to join us. Okay, we all welcome Dana Staples then. Thanks. So as an outlook, as an at-large candidate, I, I'm I'm serving for the entire city. So I, you know, I think uh, as an at-large candidate, I have I have a bigger responsibility to work with everybody, and that's one of the things that I pride myself on is is my ability to collaborate with with anybody. And, you know, I think you sit down and you talk to people and you figure out where they're coming from, and a lot of times you learn something yourself. You know, and and I think I've I've learned a lot over the years by doing just that. So uh, that's what I intend to do. Thank you so much, Dana. We appreciate that. Uh, so counselor candidates um, giving us themes of understanding, respect, being able to have differing opinions. Uh, we appreciate the responses to the first question. We're gonna move now to our second question for the Auburn City Council candidates for those who are just joining us. This question will give one minute of response time for each candidate. We'll follow the same order and the, qu the question will still be on the screen for you. What do you see as the city's most significant challenge and how do you hope to impact that issue during your term? The question will go first to Eric Gould, candidate for Ward 1. Hi, I think probably one of the biggest problems we will face I mean, the roadways, I, I definitely feel like speed's been a factor, but 
we've lost a number of teachers too to the south and it's it's a it's kind of, i don't know if it's an arms race with teachers pay or not but i would say we've lost a number of teachers and auburn is probably leading androscoggin county but you when you compare our teachers salaries to southern maine i think we're behind and uh, might be an area that needs needs to look at needs to look at and it's a tough balance though between keeping taxes in check and uh, paying the bills. So thanks for the time. Thank you, Eric. We'd welcome back Richard Whiting to answer this question, still available to you on the screen. Thanks very much. Um, I think the city of Auburn is challenged to try and grow again. Our population has actually declined. It may be up in 2020, but over the past you know, 30, 40 years, it's actually declined. Uh, we've lost industry. Uh, the industry has been replaced with lower paying jobs. Uh, we need economic growth, uh, but we also need to maintain the quality of life. Um, there's a lot of discussion about zoning and planning right now. And uh, I think that uh, it is important to expand uh, the availability of land for housing, but I think we need to use a scalpel as opposed to a sledgehammer and how we go about doing that. And as part of that uh, process, we need to take a good care of our lake. Lake Auburn is a regional water supply and we cannot afford to let the quality of the water in Lake Auburn to degrade. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Ward 2 candidate Ryan, uh, we'll welcome Ryan back. Ryan, you will have one minute uh, to answer the question on your screen. Thank you so much. With all of the divisiveness going on, besides that being our number one issue, because I don't think that people can get on the same page right now without having those clashing ideas and coming to the common ground. Besides that, I think it's truly the economic side. It's how do we, as Richard just explained, how do we grow our city, grow our population without, you know, taking the sledgehammer to things and doing it the correct way. You know, how do we bring in those new people from other towns to show what we can do and showcase how wonderful we are as, as a community? I think that is going to be very challenging for us to try and compete with other markets such as Portland or Falmouth or, you know, other places like that. But I think that we can do it as long as that divisiveness and we have the chance to talk to each other comes into place. I think we can kind of get two birds, one stone for lack of better terms. Thank you so much, Ryan, we appreciate that. Uh, we're gonna welcome back Councillor McLeod. Um, Councillor McLeod, we are on the second question. You have one minute to respond to the question. I'm happy to read it once more for you. What do you see as the city's most significant challenge and how do you hope to impact that issue in your term? Well, we'll start off by saying uh, better internet and equitable internet across the uh, region would be helpful. Um, one of the most significant challenges I see is, is kind of already been said, it's reining in what we pay for taxes alongside the services that we provide and having that delicate balance of not wanting to raise taxes, but also wanting our trash picked up every week, also wanting you know water and sewer and having, having that balance of services that we need our roads, roads plowed but not wanting to pay more in taxes. So finding ways to bring in more people to help grow our tax base, but finding the right areas to bring them into to allow us to grow in a way that doesn't involve city services having to expand all at once and slowly grow out kind of from the center outward. Um, I like the analogy of the scalpel earlier. That was definitely on point. Um, yeah. Thank you, Councilor McLeod. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll welcome back Joe Damata, a write-in candidate from Ward 5, to respond to this question next. Welcome back, Joe. Thanks. So, you know, for me, it, it, um, it, is, it is about housing. You know, it, it, is, it, is about, it is about jobs and good jobs. Um, but the thing is, it's not just about any good jobs. It really needs to be about those small and medium-sized businesses, because those are the people who are living in our community and running those businesses. Um, and so I feel like in order if, for, for us to get to any of those things, it all comes back on education, right? How do we make it so that our, so that our population is as educated as they can be so that they can do the things that they need to do? Um, so, so for me, the, the, the biggest challenge is just finding ways that we can, we can get our, our 
our population into programs of, of education that can help them get get the better jobs so they can so then they can go out and get them the, the better housing as well and all of those things. So it definitely does come back to just just um, uh, you know education. We we have to find a way to get as many people educated as we can. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate your response. Kathy, a uh, candidate for Ward 5, who is a write-in candidate, welcome back. The question remains on the screen. You have one minute to answer it. Oh, you're muted, Kathy. I think the space bar might be a shortcut Got for it. you. I think I got it now. <laughs> I think one of the most significant challenges is for our city leaders to listen to each other and be respectful of differing opinions. Primary to those opinions are the issues of housing and how to expand the housing opportunities in our city and how best to go about that we need to find a way that we can sit down and have calm conversations about housing and growth within our city. Another big topic for me is senior living in our city. And I'd like to create some sort of conversation on how we go about making it more affordable for our seniors to continue to live in their homes for as long as they possibly can. Thank you, Kathy. We appreciate that. Uh, our next um, our next turn will go to our at-large candidates, and Councillor Belinda Gary will start us off. The most significant challenge I see is restoring the faith the public have in their public officials, that we'll listen to them and hear them when they come forward, and that we'll create opportunities for us to be able to hear them or and to listen to them and to have that type of dialogue like we used to have. A lot of my constituents I've talked to say we've lost faith in them. I mean, that they have lost faith in us because we don't pay attention. They come to us, but we don't hear. So I'd like to see us go back to listening. Also, we need to do more to help our mom and pop businesses to grow and expand as well as bring in new businesses as well. We need to keep taxes as affordable as by not making our government so big. In other words, we got to control government spending as well as size of government. I want to be able to help our schools to have the tools and the money that they need so that they can educate our children well. Thank you, Councillor Gary. We appreciate that. Uh, next, we're going to turn to James Lashua, who might have joined us by now. And if not, we will welcome Dana Staples as the last city council candidate to answer this question. Welcome, Dana. Thank you. So it's really hard to say what our most significant challenge is. So let's try and encompass a bunch of them right now, okay? We just went through a, a, a very tough 18 months of, of COVID, right? Uh, during that time, we saw record numbers of housing uh, houses sold in the city. So we have a lot of new residents and, and, and we have a lot of growth that we're trying to make happen here. We have a brand new high school that we're building. We have a bunch of properties in the downtown that we're trying to sell. And right now we're seeing record numbers of permits being sold at, uh, over at City Hall. So we have a lot going on in the city and, and there's a, so much that we're really gonna have to deal with over the next two years. I think, you know, we, we need to welcome people in. We need to we need to probably make our downtown a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, focus on some of the some of the changes that we could do down there and make make things a little bit more walkable. We uh, we can tidy up the place. There's so much to do, but please follow me on Dana Staples for Auburn uh, for more information and I'll I'll put more thoughts there. Thank you so much, Dana. We appreciate it. Uh, for each of you joining us at home, we see that some of you might have joined recently. Um, that is the last of our uh, comments from our city councilor candidates, whom we greatly appreciate. Um, they're tough questions, and you guys have been doing a great job sticking to time, which we, we thank you for, and is not an easy task. 
it's my pleasure to welcome back uh, Judy, the, the editor for the Sun Journal, who will moderate our Auburn School Committee portion of this evening. Thank you, uh, Shanna, and uh, welcome to our candidates for school committee. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to introduce themselves and share their vision or their plans and their priorities. And we remind the candidates to please make sure you're unmuted before speaking. We will begin with Ward 1, and I believe we have slides to go along with this. Um, in Ward 1, we have uh, Clarissa Perez Armendarez, who is not present today. Uh, she declined to participate. And in Ward 2, we have committee member Pamela Hart, who was running unopposed for this seat. So Pamela? Uh, Pamela? Yes, hi. Welcome. Uh, my name, thank, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity to speak tonight and um, for putting this on. It's, I really am thankful that this is a great platform for our community to see who is running. Um, my name is Pam Hart. I'm running for a second term for the school committee, Ward 2. Um, I'm a wife and mother of two amazing children who have recently graduated from Edward Little High School. Um, I was born in Lewiston, raised in Madawaska, and attended college in Maine and Connecticut where I received a Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Care. I moved back to Maine in 2004 to be closer to my mom and help her after a medical injury. I've worked at CMMC for the past 16 years as a respiratory therapist, um, and I presently work in the cardiopulmonary rehab program, and my husband is a psychiatric nurse practitioner for the VA. Um, we chose to raise our family in Auburn because of the incredible community of people who make up this town. And in the years that we've, been, we've had the privilege of living here, we've really made such wonderful friends. And um, it's one of the reasons, well, the, one of the reasons I wanted to be on the committee in the first place is because I also wanted to give everybody a voice and to listen to everyone. Um, as a respiratory therapist for the past 30 years, I've um, fiercely advocated for my patients and as such, I have brought that same passion to the school committee. Thank you, Pam. Moving on to Ward 3, we have committee member Karen Mathau, who is running unopposed. She was unable to attend tonight. In Ward 4, committee member Brian Belknap, who is also not present, he was unable to attend tonight. He is unopposed for that seat. In Ward 5, committee member Daniel Poisson is unopposed and also unable to attend this evening. So we will move to our at-large candidates for school committee. We have Pamela Albert. Um, there, there, we'll hear from three of them this evening. Committee member uh, Faith Fontaine declined to participate tonight and we did not receive a response from the at-large candidate, David Simpson. So we will begin with Pamela Albert. Hi, thank you for uh, providing this opportunity this evening. Uh, so my name is Pamela Albert. I'm running for school committee at large and I grew up in Hamden, Maine and I've actually been an Auburn resident for 17 years. I currently have two children in the Auburn school system, a junior at Edward Little and an eighth grader at Auburn Middle School. And I've been very active in our school community since my oldest was started kindergarten. While my boys were at Fairview, I volunteered in the classroom and I was an active member of the Fairview PTO, which I co-chaired for two years. I've also been a member of various school subcommittees, including the Proficiency-Based Learning Work Group, the Health and Wellness Committee, and I'm a current member of both the EL Building Committee for the new high school and the District Health and Safety Committee, which has been working for the past year and a half on implementing COVID protocols within our school buildings. I have a master's degree of public health in epidemiology and biostatistics from Tufts, and I'm an epidemiologist at the Maine CDC and the University of Southern Maine, and with school districts facing the incredible challenge of educating our children amidst the pandemic for the past 18 months, I feel my public health expertise can be of value as a school committee member. I also regularly analyze, interpret, and disseminate data from the Maine Integrated Youth Health Survey, which is the health behavior survey taken by Maine high school and middle school students. So I feel I have an understanding of the physical, emotional, and mental health challenges our students face. And if elected to the school committee, I intend to prioritize the health, safety, and academic and professional success of students and staff. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. 
Next, we will hear from Patricia Godier. After all those admonitions, to the <laughs> movie, I, I did it. Happens every day to everybody. <laughs> um, I am Pat Gaudier and I'm running for school committee at large. I'm a retired librarian from Edward Little High School and I think I have a pretty good insight into what happens in the schools and how they work. Um, my primary focus on school committee would be to ensure the success of all our kids, both academically, socially, and emotionally and to support teachers, because without the teachers, the learning doesn't happen. Um, I did serve on the Auburn School Committee from 2017 to 2019. I'm currently president of the Auburn Public Library Board of Trustees, and I'm on the uh, Share Center Advisory Board. And I have spent the last almost 20 years being involved in the new Edward Little High School project. We started out as a staff at Edward Little High School coming to the community with what was wrong with the school. And I think it's the most amazing thing that's happened. And I, I absolutely am thrilled that the city has agreed to go forth with this. Um, my interest in coming back on the school committee revolve around, um, as Pam just said, the pandemic. I did sit on the steering committee for the health and safety uh, reentry committee. Um, I have two grandchildren in the system. One did well with uh, remote learning, one did not. I'm particularly concerned about the remediation needs that are. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you very much. And uh, you'll have more time to, if you want to continue your thoughts further in. And last up is uh, Jody Goldrup. Hi, uh, hi there. Um, my name is Jody Goldrop. I'm a graduate of Ever Little High School. My husband and I have two children. We've chosen to raise them in Auburn. Our oldest son is in seventh grade at Auburn Middle School, and our youngest is in third grade at Walton Elementary School. I have been an active part of our Walton family since my oldest was in kindergarten. I have seen firsthand the love, passion, and support the teachers, staff, and administrators have for their students. As a community member and parent, I feel that it's important to teach my children the value of being a part of our community and supporting the community as well. I have been an active volunteer in the school and I've been part of the Walton's PTO since my youngest was in kindergarten, my oldest was in kindergarten. I am currently vice president of the PTO and I'm a parent representative for Walton's PBIS committee. I have also been the Walton's parent rep for the school department's parent advisory committee where I've helped to write policies um, concerning parent engagement. I believe these experiences will help me if I get the chance to serve on the school committee. I am passionate about our children's education. and I believe that parents and community engagement will help our children feel supported and become successful. Research has shown that children who are engaged with the community and surrounded by supportive adults are able to adapt to and overcome adversities. They will value their community and the relationships they have developed. This helps build leadership, develop problem solving and decision making skills. I feel it's important to listen to our educators and our school administrators and to give them our support so that we can continue to raise our graduation rate and help students meet their testing standards. Thank you very much, Jody. Thank you. All right, we will move on to the first of our two questions. These first question, each of the candidates will have 30 seconds to answer. And I think we have a slide where the question can stay up um, so that it's in front of you. So we will start uh, with Ward 2 committee member, Pamela Hart. I'm just gonna quickly read the question if you could bear with me. Uh, Given recent divisive behavior at times within our city councils and school boards, how do you envision being able to work together for the overall benefit of our communities? Pamela, you'll have 30 seconds. So having been on the committee for the past two years, I have had to deal with the divisive behavior, but I have to say that I have always had an open mind. I've always tried to be the voice of reason. I've always listened to everybody. Um, I feel it's very important that everybody has a voice and that everybody listens. I think it's important that we respect each other and we listen to everybody's views, whether they agree, if they agree with ours or not. It's important to listen and it's important to empathize and to understand, to try to understand where people are coming from. So I think the more that we do that, the better off we'll be. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
and on to our at-large candidates, beginning with Pamela Albert. Sure, thank you. I think um, I would echo some of what Pam Hart just said um, in terms of respect is foundational, I think, in terms of overcoming divisiveness. Listening is imperative and making sure that all voices are heard and respected. I think an understanding of facts of the subject at hand is imperative as well. Keeping emotions out of it is important and compromising is the key to getting work done in a group setting. Thank you very much, Pamela. Mm -hmm. And on to Patricia Godier. Well, I think most of it's been said. <clears throat> um, I think be being willing to listen and being attentive when people speak is very important. Um, I think I'm able to see both sides and it's very important that we do gather the information from both sides, but we need to be respectful of others. We need to remember the objective of the discussion and we also need to be kind to each other. Be kind, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Jody Goldrup. Oh, so, let, us, let us give us a minute to restart the clock. Hold oh, on a second. Yeah. Don't want to just give you four seconds. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I agree with what the other candidates have said. I think being respectful is extremely important. I think we really need to truly listen to one another. We need to listen to the town. We need to listen to all the constituents. I also feel that it's important that we look at what our stu students truly need to be able to succeed. Um, and we need to do that. We need to compromise with one another. We need to communicate. We need to be respectful. We need to listen. Thank you very much. All right, on to our second question, which will uh, you'll have 60 seconds to respond uh, to this one. So once again, we'll begin with War II candidate, a committee member, Pamela Hart. And the question, which will be here momentarily, is what do you see as the city's most significant education related challenge and how do you hope to impact that issue in your term? You have 60 seconds. So with the past 18 months and COVID pretty much permeating every aspect of all of our lives, including education, I think that one of the most significant related challenges is to try to keep kids to try to get kids to get back to what they've lost. Um, unfortunately, with what we had to do during the pandemic and having kids in school only half the time, um, they've lost a lot. And so it's important that we really focus on not only their educational loss, but also their mental health, their social um, economic issues. There are so many issues that COVID has really brought up. And it's really important that we focus on what the children have lost and to really give them what is needed. As a school board member, um, I have tried to advocate for safety for their students. I've tried to make it and so that they feel comfortable going back to school and not fearful. I've... Um... Thank you very much, Pamela. <laughs> I know 60 seconds isn't very much time. All right, and on to our at-large candidates, beginning with Pamela Albert. Sure, so I think, I think currently right now, the most significant education-related challenge I see is keeping our students in the building as much as possible this year um, in terms of COVID protocols. And, and like Pam said, getting back to as much of a normal school year as possible, um, where we're now going into really year three of, of, of a school year where this our students have been affected. I think getting doing whatever we can um, as a school committee, administrators and staff to physically keep students in the building, um, limit the number of quarantines, keeping students in their after school activities while also supporting our extremely exhausted and overworked school staff as much as possible um, in the buildings, especially admins and school nurses. I've worked with many school nurses um, as a COVID case investigator the past year and the their asks that they've been tasked with doing this year have been enormous. So I think supporting them is key. Thank you very much. 
and Patricia Godier. Yeah, 60 seconds. Um, obviously, uh, COVID is the key um, problem that we're having in the schools right now. Um, I still am interested in keeping kids safe in the schools. Um, this pandemic is not over and we need to keep be mindful of ways that we can keep them safe while they are in school. I'm very much concerned about the remediation of kids. Um, some kids have grown, some have not. They've lost academics, they've lost social and emotional growth. And I would like to see the monies coming from the state and the federal government being used to impact those losses for our students. Um, currently, there are no subs in the, in the schools. It's making it very difficult when teachers are out, they're dragging ed, um, ed techs from other things that they should be doing. And I think that there's monies out there available so that we can address those needs. Um, Thank you, Patricia. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And Jody, on to you. I also, I, I just, I agree with what everyone has been saying. We need to keep our kids in school. We need to get them, anyone who's fallen behind, we need to get them caught up. Our testing numbers have been low to begin with. We need to find ways to move forward and keep them in the classroom to get more support, more support for our educators, more support for our staff. We need to continue their growth. Just want to get the kids back to as normal as possible and keep them healthy. I think that's the most important thing. We want them in school, but they need to be healthy and they need to stay healthy in order to stay in school. And that's how their education is going to continue. That's how we move past this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to all of our candidates for taking the time to be with us tonight and for our participants for uh, tuning in. We really appreciate the attention. Um, the Sun Journal will continue coverage of the elections as we move toward election day, which is just a little more than a month away. Uh, all the candidates can expect to be contacted for profiles and we encourage people to look to the Sun Journal for, um, for election coverage. Uh, voting is November 2nd from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Absentee ba ballots are available now though and through October 28th if people wanna vote uh, absentee. Uh, so I just wanted to thank our partners, the chamber and the libraries in Lewiston and Auburn for participating with us tonight. And Shanna, did you wanna add anything? I would just like to say um, thank you so much <clears throat> to each of you who were able to uh, make time tonight. Our, um, our session went fairly quick, which was fantastic. We're so grateful that each of you managed to answer with such clear answers about what your visions are, what your thoughts were to these questions, and still manage to make the, the timing work so that we could get all of the candidates in. Uh, we're grateful for that and grateful for the public service that each of you do. We hear from so many um, business owners uh, in Lewiston and Auburn who are caring about the, the elections and about the governance on both sides of the city because they might live or own in either or both. Um, and so being here tonight and, and this opportunity is one that um, our members are grateful for and grateful for each of you with your public service. Uh, we will be back at seven o'clock with our Lewiston candidates starting on time and promptly. And we hope that you're able to enjoy this intermission. Go and fill your bowl of popcorn up, refresh your glass um, and tune back in at seven o'clock. Thank you so much.
Am I in the right place now? Yes, you oh. are. Oh, I am. Okay, thank you. I've been trying for 10 minutes. <clears throat>
Does sound like one of our panelists has uh, unmuted themselves. We're going to ask that everybody remains muted until you're called on. Um, we are aiding you in staying muted. So if you unmute yourself and we mute you, please remain that way. Good evening. Welcome to tonight's Fall Candidates Forum. It's brought to you by a collaboration with the Sun Journal, the Auburn and Lewiston Public Libraries, and the Lewiston-Auburn Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. I'm Shanna Cox, the President and CEO here at the Chamber, and we're excited to get underway with you tonight. I'm joined by Judy Meyer. Judy, say welcome and good evening to everyone. Thanks for folks who stayed over from our earlier Auburn portion. Welcome and good evening. <laughs> It's a, it's a pleasure to, um, to do this with the Sun Journal tonight. We've had a blast planning. We are progressing through our evening with Lewiston's candidates. Um, we just want to start with a little bit of note of how we got to where we are this evening. Upon receipt of the official list from the city clerk's offices, which named all candidates who had completed all necessary paperwork, we shared an invitation to tonight's forum to everyone who was registered. One week later, a second reminder invitation was sent, followed by direct phone calls to all non-responsive candidates. Every effort was made by the organizers of tonight's event to include all candidates on file. Those who had registered as write-in candidates by September 20th were also invited. A note about this evening's format. We will begin with a mayoral race, move to the city council race, and end with the school committee. The order of candidates will begin with Ward 1, alphabetically by last name. This will be followed by each ward with the at-large going last. This format will be repeated within each race. Each candidate will have one and a half minutes, 90 seconds, to introduce themselves. Then 30 seconds to respond to the first question of the evening and one minute to respond to the second question of the night. To ensure that we hear from all candidates, we will strictly adhere to the clock. You and our candidates will see the timer and will be muted should they go over. Candidates, please do make sure you are unmuted before you begin speaking. No questions were provided in advance of this evening and we did not accept recordings of any nature. Everyone here tonight is live with you at home. We're gonna begin by covering the ground rules that were agreed upon before this evening. They are established to support our common purpose that the citizens and business owners of Auburn and Lewiston would have an opportunity to learn more about the people who are hoping to lead our communities. The ground rules we will follow are from the American Bar Association's ground rules for ensuring a civil conversation. They are as follows. Show respect for the views expressed by others, even if you strongly disagree. Be brief, stick to the time allocated in your comments so that all who wish to speak have a chance to express their views. Direct your comments to the group and audience at home as a whole, rather than to any one individual. Don't let disagreements or conflicting views become personal. Name calling and shouting are not acceptable ways of conversing with others. Let others express their views without interruption. Your moderator will ensure everyone has a chance to speak. And as a note, due to time constraints, rebuttals or responses to others will not be permitted. Should you choose to use the time that you have allocated to respond to other comments as well as the question, you may do so. It is now my pleasure to welcome Judy Meyer, the executive editor of the Sun Journal to get us underway with the May oral race. Welcome back, Judy. Thank you very much. And welcome to our candidates. 
We are gonna begin with the candidates for mayor with introductions. Each candidate will have 90 seconds to introduce themselves and share their vision, their priorities, or their plans. And once again, a reminder to please unmute before you begin speaking. So we will begin first with mayoral candidate, Donna Gillespie. Thank you, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, thank you. I have this. The, uh, hi, I'm excited to be here, sorry for that. My computer just went away for a second. <laughs> oh. I am running for mayor because I have been a strong advocate for the past 40 years from children to senior citizens to adults with disabilities. And I believe this experience will enable me to be a strong advocate for all the residents of Lewiston. I've lived in Lewiston for the past 30 years and have been fortunate enough to witness the positive changes the city has gone through during this time. If elected mayor, my pri primary focus would be to continue to the trend of progressing the city in this positive direction. Lewiston has an incredibly caring and generous community. And I speak a lot about moving the city into the 21st century in regards to infrastructure, technology and community. And I think this is all possible without losing the strong sense of community we now share. Part of my plan to continue the positive object the city has been on over the past 30 years is to work with our city council members to implement some of my ideas to generate consistent revenue for allowing the city, <coughs> excuse me, for the city for, uh, to allow our progress to continue. I look forward to the opportunity to meet with potential voters. So please visit my website, gillespieformayor.pollyengine.com. Thank you. Thank you very much, Donna. And now to hear from mayoral candidate, Carl Shaleen. Hello. Good evening, and thank you for joining this forum tonight. If elected mayor of Lewiston, I will work tirelessly to take advantage of the tremendous amount of opportunities we have now to move Lewiston forward. To succeed, we need renewed focus on economic development that will fill vacant storefronts and buildings. Also, now that the city owns the canals, we must leverage that as a city asset to encourage economic development and people to live here. By doing so, we can increase the tax base and have some extra money to do a few things like lowering our property taxes and increasing services like recreation. We also need to address our city's image problem. Most of it isn't fair. People are talking about the Lewiston from 30 and 40 years ago. We've changed, but people's perceptions haven't. We need to take immediate steps to fix this by removing graffiti from public and private property, picking up litter and beautifying our city parks. It starts with us. I'm proud to live in Lewiston, and I want everyone to feel that way too. Our schools play a major role in strengthening our city. Let's set our kids and community up for shared success by supporting and investing in our schools and teachers today and for generations to come. Having a strong school system will make our city more attractive to families and employers. As mayor, I will beat the drum for Lewiston. Our future is bright, and I'll show everyone what a great place Lewiston is to live, to raise a family and have a business. I'm excited about Lewiston now and I'm- Thank you, Carl. Thank you very much for the introductions and we will move on to our first question. You will have 30 seconds to respond to this question and we will put it up on the screen so you'll be able to see it while you're answering. <clears throat> All right, our first question. Given the recent divisive behavior at times within our city councils and school boards, how do you envision being able to work together for the overall benefit of our communities? And we will begin first with Donna. Donna, you have 30 seconds to answer to the question. Yes, thank you. Um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that we need to you know, keep in mind that this has to be a group effort with the, within the whole, you know, the whole city. And then that includes, you know, not only working with the school, but with city council and, and, you know, people who live in the community. I think that we need to make sure that everybody is at the table communicating because you can't just have 
one, you know, person or, you know, a group of a small group of people, um, you know, trying to figure. Thank you, Donna. Thank you very much. And the slide does say Auburn mayoral, but obviously we're in we're in Lewiston now. <laughs> so forgive the error. I don't want to mis mislead anybody. Um, all right, Carl, uh, for you to answer the question, you have uh, 30 seconds. Thank you. Building trust starts with listening and being respectful. We won't always agree on everything and we should proceed to work together in good faith to bridge our differences. The citizens of Lewiston expect us to get things done and move Lewiston forward. Retreating to each other's corner only results in gridlock and we shouldn't be afraid to work together on things that we do agree on. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and on to our second question for our mayoral candidates. Uh, and we, again, we'll start with Donna. Donna, what do you see as the city's most significant challenge and how do you hope to impact that issue in your term? I think that there are many things actually that um, are significant challenges for Lewis and it's hard to pinpoint one specific. You know, we have, you know, we have drugs, we have homelessness, you know, we have a lot of things that, you know, we need to, you know, work on. So, but again, I think that if you're not talking to the people in the community as to how they think things can get better, how they can fix it. Oftentimes things are done in, you know, in isolation of the people who really know more about, you know, what is going on. I think we need to listen to them. Um, again, I, I think there are a lot of challenges, divisiveness certainly is just one, as you just mentioned. But I think, you know, for the, for the drug issue, um, I know that there's a new, you know, place coming in town for safe, you know, drug use. But I would like to expand on that so that it's not just a place where you can go and, you know, do drugs safely. But, you know, there's, it's also a place where you can have right next door all the resources you need for an alternative choice. So that's one option. Thank you very much, Donna. Carl, the same question to you, 60 seconds. As I mentioned earlier during my introduction, I think our city's image problem is our single biggest issue. We need to take concrete steps to finally solve this issue for Lewiston. Besides doing things like removing graffiti and litter, we also need to be saying the right things. Messaging starts from the top down. And as mayor, I will only be talking about how Lewiston is a great place to live and work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you both for uh, participating tonight. And we will move on to Lewiston City Council candidates. We will begin with Ward 1. Once again, the candidates will have 90 seconds to introduce themselves and talk about their goals and priorities. And we'll, we will begin with Dane Morgan. Dane? How are we doing? Um, so thank you guys for, uh, for hosting this for us today. Um, I know you guys would rather talk about things like residency, but uh, I think it's important for us to talk about the future of Lewis. And um, uh, this past year in May, we reached a settlement with the Department of Justice that addressed uh, systemic and discriminatory practices uh, with our students with disabilities and those learning English. Um, a year ago, we had the Lewis and Police Union put out a statement uh, that condemned Mayor Kerr's Equity and Diversity Committee. Um, you know, we've lost city administrators as well as superintendents, et cetera. Um, and I think for Lewis and we're trying to figure out what we want to do and how we're going to do that. Uh, a few of those ways, uh, you know, a few of the things that I've taken a look at uh, would be our ELL and EIP issues. They've been going on for the last 15 years. The way I see it is that those who have been in office for the last 15 years are accountable for that. Um, and, you know, we, we just can't, we can't continue to let people uh, who violate the rights of our students continue to make decisions regarding our, our, the future of our city. Um, as city council for Ward 1, I hope to and plan to serve as the uh, city council rep for the school committee board. Um, also, you know, we, with uh, um, Mayor, uh, not Mayor Kerr, but uh, Governor LePage penned his greatest uh, hits and his greatest hits said that uh, they, meaning black people came up here and black men came here to sell their heroin and go back home. Um, apparently he was talking about me, however, I don't fit that description. I'm a Navy veteran. I know I came to Maine to serve my country and fell in love with Lewiston. Um, and going forward, I plan to continue upholding what we're looking for in terms of 
Thank you very much, Dane. We, we really will hold people to the clock. So if you could watch the countdown, it would be appreciated. Um, and also in Ward 1, uh, seeking the city council seat is Linda Scott. Hi, Linda. thank you. Hi. Um, I really appreciate you holding this forum this evening. I think this is really important for our community to be able to get to know us and see who we are. Um, my name is Linda Scott, as you said, and I was born and raised in Lewiston. I am a graduate of Lewiston High School. I currently work as a ed tech and a behavioral health professional at Sandcastle Educational Center in early childhood education. I have lived in Ward 1 for 21 years with my husband, Steve, and we raised our family here in Lewiston on Pettengill Street. For three consecutive terms, my neighbors voted for me to represent our ward on the school committee. Once on the school committee, my peers nominated and voted for me to be their chair for two years. I am currently serving on the planning board, being nominated for that board by two mayors. This summer, I served on the Charter Review Committee, and I am also currently a sitting board member for the Downtown Lewiston Association. I know I have the skills and the knowledge to speak for my neighbors in Ward 1, and with my experience, I am prepared to begin that work on day one. Just last week, I received a phone call from a neighbor in the Sunnyside Park neighborhood, calling with, with concerns about a very hazardous building, particularly after the fire we just saw. I immediately reached out to the code enforcement office and that today I received word that the city will absolutely be looking at that building, talk to the owner and make sure that that is taken care of. I am already doing the work that our ward needs. I am also an avid walker. Thank you very much, Linda. We will move on now to Ward 2, where we will hear from uh, Robert McCarthy and Councillor Caleb Roebuck. Good evening. Hi, Bob. You have 90 seconds. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Robert McCarthy, and I'm seeking the office of City Councilor for Ward 2. I'm a fifth generation and lifelong resident of Boston. My two children are residents of this city, and my seven grandchildren are or will be students in its school system. This gives me a large stake in the future of this city. I have no preconceived political agenda. My sole purpose for running is to be a strong voice and advocate for the residents of Ward 2. I have over 20 years of management experience, ranging from budgeting, building construction and maintenance to all aspects of human resources. This experience provides all the skills necessary to fulfill the duties of city councilor. I have served and led numerous groups and committees from president of the Austin High School Swim and Soccer Boosters to president of the Sun Journal Benefit Association. In my spare time, I enjoy spending time with my children and grandchildren, along with playing softball and disc golf. As city councilor, I will balance the needs of the residents with the needs of the taxpayers. All expenses need to be scrutinized, but no legitimate line items should go unfunded. In these troubling times with an uncertain future, I feel a level-headed individual like myself is needed in city government. Thank you all for joining in tonight, and I hope and I can count on your support November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And now we will hear from Councillor uh, Caleb Roebuck. Thank you. Uh, my name is Caleb Roebuck, and I work in the service industry as a tasting room associate at a craft brewery. I've worn many different hats previously and have various hiring and management and budget experience as well. Now I'm running for Ward 2 City Councilor. I moved into my house on Robinson Gardens the night before a major snowstorm. And my first day here, there was 18 inches of snow on the ground. And I was living on my own. I went out to attempt to shovel, uh, shovel my driveway. And my neighbor, who I hadn't met yet and had no idea who I was, came over with her snowblower and helped me finish clearing the driveway. This was just the first of many experiences that showed me what Lewiston truly is. And it's a community of uh, neighbors that uh, helping neighbors. We don't care about political affiliation or where someone came from. We just want what's best for each other. Unfortunately, that sometimes gets overlooked. While in office now, and if elected, I promise to represent the good here. Um, I absolutely love this city and I will continue to listen to, respond, work with, and help my constituents when reached out to. I will help make sure our schools are fully funded and students are set up for success no matter what path they take and reinvest in our city by implementing and supporting initiatives to bring real, good paying jobs here or support the working class. I've been out knocking on doors, listening to concerns and ideas for our future, and I will continue to talk to the people of Ward 2 and be open and accessible. I will avoid divisive politics and will work with anyone who comes to the table in good faith. 
If we share the same passion for the city and its people, we can work together for everyone's benefit. Lewiston is my home and I want everyone here to succeed and grow. Thank you very much. And now we will move on to Ward 3, where Scott Harriman is seeking the seat and he is unopposed in this race. Scott? Hello. Um, thank you for putting this, this event on. Thanks to the Chamber of Commerce, the Sun Journal, and the Library. Uh, my name is Scott Harriman. I'm running for Lewiston City Council in Ward 3. Uh, I was born and raised in Central Maine. I graduated from the University of Maine at Farmington. Uh, I've lived in Maine my whole life, and I settled in Lewiston a little over four years ago. Uh, my partner and I live on Shawmut Street, where I own a multi-unit building. I work as a landlord and as an in-home caregiver for a person with a long-term illness. Uh, I'm running for city council because I think it's important to volunteer for my community and for um, other organizations that matter to me. I've done that previously with the Bicycle Coalition of Maine, um, with also at a local COVID-19 vaccine clinic. Uh, my priorities for city council include supporting our school system, making sure that all students receive a good education, an equitable education, and that all of our educators and staff feel valued and supported. Uh, also working to expand safe and affordable housing options in the city and helping to build a city where everyone feels safe and welcome. Uh, other interests include improving and expanding our public transportation system, um, safe options for walking and bicycling, and creating inviting parks, uh, especially keeping in mind places for kids to play. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. And in Ward 4, uh, pardon me, Ricky LaChapelle is running unopposed for that seat, was unable to attend tonight. In Ward 5, uh, Laurier Pease did not respond to our request uh, to participate and is not here. So we will hear from Amy Clark Sanchez next. Amy? Hi, thanks so much for putting this on. I appreciate it. I am Amy Sanchez. Uh, I'm a mother. I have lived in this part of Lewiston for the last four to five years. Uh, I graduated from Edward Little, moved away, and then decided Maine was home, and so I came back. I love Maine, and I love the neighborhood that I'm in. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in accounting, and I specialized in nonprofit and government accounting. Um, I feel like as city councilors, it's our job to oversee and, and promote collaboration between the school board and the people. Um, I think that we can do that, uh, you know, we can do that, <laughs> sorry. Um, also, I've created two nonprofits. One is Community Critters, which is helping our underprivileged people that have pets right now during the COVID crisis that may need help. We we have a pet pantry at Caden's Kitchen. Um, I've also gotten a grant to create and hand out 2,000 masks during the pandemic. So I do care about the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Amy. Uh, and finally, in Ward 5, uh, we will hear from Charles Soule. Charles, you have 90 seconds. Charles, could you please unmute your phone? There. There you go. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I'm Charles Stoll. I live uh, in the inner city of Lewis and Maine, and it's well under police. The number of shootings down here have got to be addressed. And the crime rate in the inner city has to be addressed. But you cannot do that if you have nine, if your Lewiston Police Department is nine police officers down. Another thing is that in, uh, um, in uh, 2019, uh, Lewiston High School students uh, half the class would not have graduated 
if they had to um, drop the grade point average to graduate uh, for that year. And I think that uh, that is something to look at as uh, what is occurring in our school systems. Um, as far as um, race relation goes, uh, in the inner city, it's not all that bad. And um, another thing is that um, the uh, new manners have become an essential Thank you, part Charles. of Lewiston. Without Thank you, the new manners contributing by buying property and becoming a landlord and working in the uh, private sector, um, mine. Another thing that bothers me is the fact that Charles. Oh, he. I think we just lost him. All right. Well, we we will continue. Uh, we are now on to Ward Six. Uh, Councillor Lee Kumlent is unopposed and declined to participate tonight. And in Ward 7, um, Stephanie Gelinas was is also unopposed for her seat and she is unable to attend. So that brings us to the first set of questions or the first question. Candidates will have 30 seconds to answer this question and we will begin in Ward 1 with Dane Morgan. Dane, if you could just let me read the question as it comes up on the screen, and then we'll let you get started. The question will stay up on the screen while you're answering so you have it for reference. So Dane, this is for you. Given recent divisive behavior at times within our city councils and school boards, how do you envision being able to work together for the overall benefit of our communities? You have 30 seconds. Uh, collaborative work has been the, uh, the hallmark of anything I've ever done. Um, anything, anybody that knows me knows that I work very well within teams um, in that process. It's all about listening. Um, everyone who comes to the table has, uh, has experience in some way, shape or form. That experience should be, uh, should be revered, should be uh, respected. Um, it, is, it is our onus to work with each other. Again, coming from different backgrounds, coming from different spaces um, and the ability to work together is what pushes people forward. Uh, as a coach, one of our biggest things was that um, it's it's your success, not ours. And so if you're successful, we are successful as well. And that's always been the goal for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Ward 1 candidate, Linda Scott. Yes, thank you. So I think this is a really important conversation to have. If we don't have civility, respect, and compromise, we can never move our city forward. We cannot draw a line in the sand. We cannot be divisive. This does nothing for us. I hope that if I'm elected as your city councilor, that I get the opportunity to serve on the school board so that I can ensure that we are having conversations between both boards, not only during budget season, but throughout the whole year. These conversations need to be had on a regular basis. This is how we're gonna move our city forward. Thank you. Thank you. We are now going to move on to Ward 2 uh, candidates, beginning with Robert McCarthy. Yes, um, I think the biggest thing to do is to get politics out of the different committees that we have between the city council and the school committee. Um, I think that plays a big part in the divisiveness between the boards. We also need to come to grips with what we all uh, agree on and move those to the side, agree on them, put them to bed, and then try to compromise on anything that is dividing us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also in Ward 2, Councillor Caleb Roebuck. Caleb? Yeah, as I mentioned, I said um, I will avoid all the divisiveness. And uh, if people are coming to the table in good faith, regardless on if we agree on what the solution is, we can work together for it. So I just want to understand that uh, I want to make sure everyone there understands that we are here for the shared benefit of the city. And that's what we need to focus on, that we're working for the city and the people here. And if everyone understands that, then we'll be able to work together 
disagree civilly and be able to move forward on the important issues. Thank you very much. And we will now jump to Ward 5 and hear from Amy Sanchez. Amy? Hi, thanks. Oh, sorry, it should be Scott Harriman next. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so That's sorry. Okay. I've written so many notes on my uh, note sheet here. I scratched you out inadvertently. My apologies. Um, Ward three, Scott Harriman, 30 seconds to answer the question that's on the board. Thank you. Um, first off, I think the most important thing is to have mutual respect. Um, second, I would prioritize facts and data over emotions. And um, a lot of people have told me that I'm a reasonable, respectful person and a good listener. And I plan to bring those things to um, to the seat at the city council. Thank you. And my apologies again, Scott, for jumping over you. No problem. Um, and for putting Amy on deck a little too soon. So Amy, now you're up. Yay, it's my turn. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think that city council and the school committee should ultimately always have a goal of collaborating together and understanding each other's goals. The bottom line is our children are our future and they're important. And yes, there are a lot of things that go into policy procedures and budgets, and it's not always fun, but we do have to have the respect of each other and work together to get through. Thank you very much, Amy. Uh, and I do not see Charles Soule uh, in the room. Um, oh, oh. Charles Soule, if you're still in the room, you are up next. You have 30 seconds to answer this question. If you would unmute your, your phone, please. And please mind the clock. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, we have to act like adults. Uh, second of all, uh, with, I would just put the party uh, aside and representing the public. Did you get that? We did get that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we are going to move on to our second of our two questions tonight, and we'll go in the same order. Um, starting with Ward 1, Dane Morgan, we'll just give us a minute here to get the uh, slide up with the question so you can see it to think about it. So starting in one Ward 1 with Dane, the question is, what do you see as the city's most significant challenge and how do you hope to impact that issue in your term? You will have 60 seconds to respond to this question. Um, it's a combination. It's how we've treated class um, issues and racial issues in the city. Uh, the combination has left us, uh, has, has given us a lot to, uh, to talk about and to worry about. Our new mainers have issues, especially with our OPS system as we spoke about earlier. Um, we also, again, we, we've had everything from our police union condemn inequity and diversity community, uh, committee to uh, divisiveness between our, our boards. Um, you know, how do, I, how do I intend to impact the issue is by being a part of the board and by uh, bringing those tools necessary, bringing an understanding that doesn't come just from living in Lewiston, but comes from being in the military, being across the world, um, having children at this point as well. Um, and the compassion that it takes to be able to do all of that, to be a leader as well uh, in our community. And so uh, my goals are to ensure that I'm a part of that process all the way through um, and that we, we continue to strive for the best of Lewiston that we can have. Thank you very much. And now we will hear from Linda Scott. Hi, thank you. So I honestly believe that we have a lot of significant challenges in our community, anywhere from economic development, housing, homelessness, our opiate crisis, how we can help our local businesses. And particularly, I've been looking at our citywide valuation. 
A lot of people don't like the way our taxes are in our community. We haven't had a valuation in almost 30 years. We need to get that done. It cannot just be something that's on our capital improvement plan, but it's something that needs to be pushed right now. And I will push for that because it will help with the taxes in our community. Another issue we're having is housing. Housing is a significant crisis in our community. But what is our, our planning and development code department doing about housing? We do a lot of projects when we look at big projects for 245 units and that sort of thing. But what are we doing about our small neighborhoods and our, and our neighbors who want to build onto their houses, maybe want to build a duplex or do other things? Is our zoning conducive to that? It is not. And that is another issue that I want to look at. Main Street is a significant pedestrian hazard. We have thank a lot you of very much, Linda. Very thank you very much. All right, we'll move to Ward Two now and hear first from Robert McCarthy. Uh, you have sixty seconds. Uh, good evening. I think the biggest challenge to uh, the city of Lawson is opportunity, and that goes in multiple multiple ways. First, it's affordable housing. I think we need to uh, increase our housing opportunities in all levels from affordable housing for the people at the lower end of the spectrum to uh, mid and upper level so that we can serve all people within the city of Austin. The other thing is, is to try to attract businesses to give the, the uh, residents of the city uh, the best opportunity to succeed for the future. I would like to see a more vibrant downtown. Uh, it's coming around. There's been a lot of investment and I think we need to keep moving forward with that along with developing the mills along the river for housing. I think that that's a great opportunity to uh, really make a difference in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And we will hear from Councillor Caleb Roebuck next. Yeah, uh, economic opportunity is absolutely what I see as the most significant challenge. And it's definitely been exacerbated with the pandemic issues that we are still dealing with. We have a lot of spaces where there can be real good paying jobs coming in that will benefit the working class, which will then lead to uh, you know, houses being purchased here and bringing in some of that tax revenue. I also think one of the significant challenges we're facing is as I mentioned, setting up students for success. I think something that we can do, both city council, school committee, is work with the schools to set up programs uh, and different types of classes at the school where it's not gonna be a one size fits all. If someone wants to go into the trades, if someone decides to go into college, if someone wants to focus more on arts and music, there are those opportunities. And then that will then in turn uh, make it more likely for students to stay here and contribute into our local economy once they graduate. Thank you very much. And on to Ward 3, we will now hear from Scott Harriman. Thank you. Um, I think if I had to pick one issue that was a challenge for the city, um, I think I'd have to pick poverty because it leads to so many of our other challenges that we have. Um, I see it in my neighborhood all the time. Uh, a lot of people are really struggling to get by. Uh, as far as what we can do, my biggest priorities would be supporting the school system. Uh, education is really the key to, uh, to success. And uh, as some other people have touched on affordable housing, uh, we currently have barely any vacancy as far as apartments go in, in Lewiston. And it really makes it challenging for people to move here. It makes it challenging for renters because it gives landlords all the power in the, in the relationship. Um, so affordable housing and expanding those options would be another major, uh, major issue we need to tackle. Thank you very much. And finally, we will wrap up the second question with Ward 5, starting with Amy Sanchez. Thank you. Uh, in my work in Lewiston, I am part of Healthy Neighborhoods, who was instrumental in spearheading the Choice Grant Award, which was $30 million. Biggest challenge in Lewiston is poverty. That includes housing. That includes getting resources to people. The Choice Grant, yes, it is a long-term 
solution, but it is going to provide not only uh, new housing for lower income, it's also going to help with abatement. It's also going to boost our economy. So these are all things that we need to be working on now and set up that infrastructure so that we can support that $30 million grant that is going to build Lewiston up and change the way everyone looks at Lewiston. Thank you very much, Amy. And we will wrap up with Charles Soul. Charles, you have 60 seconds. Well, speaking of how neighborhoods, I was asked to be the uh, front man uh, at one of their cleanup events. Um, I also talked one of the landlords into selling the property for that uh, street, a uh, Bartlett Street, Walnut, and Pine Street project. Um, you know, I've, I've lived in Lewiston all my life, except for when I was in the military, during the uh, military police action in Vietnam. And, um, you know, I, I had a look, I run for mayor of the city of Lewiston many times, got knocked down, and I keep running. And I'm going to keep running because I hope to see Lewiston become a, a haven for education opportunity and especially uh, a job security for a lot of people that don't have it. I think a lot of people that need job security need transportation to that job. They need some sort of um, aid to uh, suit them. Thank you very much, Charles. Uh, thank you again to all of our city council candidates. Uh, this has been very informative and I am gonna turn uh, the program back to Shanna Cox to hear from our school committee candidates. Shanna? Thank you, Judy. <clears throat> Thanks to all of um, our mayoral and city council candidates uh, for their time tonight. I hope they're sticking around um, to see the school committee members that they might have an opportunity to work with. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome Lewiston's candidates for school committee. They'll be introducing themselves. They each have 90 seconds to share their vision, their plans, their priorities, and this is a, a reminder to each of those candidates that uh, they need to unmute as they enter. We'll begin uh, first with our Ward 1 committee um, members. And we'll just give it a second for all the slides to come up. And as she does it, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Strawberry, who's our behind the scenes tech operator tonight and is managing uh, four flipboards to make this evening possible for you at home. We're going to start first with Ward 1. Uh, we have current committee member Bruce Damon, who um, did not respond to tonight's request to join. We also have Ward 1 Matthew Jadud, uh, who is with us this evening. Matthew, welcome. Thank you. And please tell us uh, 90 seconds of, of what you see for the school committee in Lewiston. It does appear that you are unmuted and yet have no sound. I don't know what's there you go sir welcome oh uh, can you hear me yes we can all right how much time do i have left a minute and 20. thank you my name is matt jaded i'm a ward one parent of third and seventh grade boys in lewiston public schools i've spent nearly 20 years in the classroom as a computer science educator and both my wife and i are children of public school educators I chose to run because I deeply value public education, and I have the greatest respect for our educators, our administrators, our teachers, our staff who work with our children every day. As a representative for Ward 1, I want to serve by listening and being a bridge between our community and our schools. While doing this, I do intend to ask hard questions because I think the work we do is important and worthy of an ongoing commitment to improving our schools. And finally, I hope I can help bring some greater transparency to the work we do as a school committee, because I feel sometimes it's opaque to the public. As members of the school committee, we're charged to do this work ethically, to support and not run our schools, so that all our children get absolutely the best education possible. I'm committed to this work and these principles, and I would love to be the school committee representative for Ward 1. Thank you so much, Matt. We appreciate that. We're gonna turn our attention now to our Ward 2 candidates. Uh, we'll be hearing first from current committee member, Janet Bodoin. Janet, welcome. Hi there. 
Um, I am Janet Bowden, and last June, it was a great honor when Mayor Mark Kerr asked me to step forward to fill a vacancy on the school board, and I'm extremely grateful to the Lewiston City Council for approving my nomination. Um, it has been an eye-opening experience that has motivated me to seek election um, for a full term. To succeed in this position, I will continue to approach the work with an open mind, seeking out all perspectives, and working collaboratively with all stakeholders. As a proud wife and parent of two students in the Lewiston schools, a longtime resident and taxpayer in Lewiston and an active engaged community member, I'll bring firsthand experience, relationships and perspective to each decision that is made. I've been active in this community for approximately 20 years. I've served on the board of my local PTO, uh, my, my children's boosters in the high school. Um, and all of this stuff has resulted in me being asked to serve on a variety of committees over the years. Um, including the committee that structured the new Connors Elementary School. More recently, I worked to energize the community um, to, in an effort to save our school resource officers. Um, as we continue to navigate the challenges our school communities face in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, I'll continue to advocate for our children's best interests, as well as firmly standing up for our parents' um, right to make decisions for their children. I would be honored to get your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. I appreciate that. Uh, we're next going to invite Edward Jawar to join us and share a little bit of information about himself. Welcome, Edward. Hi, thanks. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm Ed Jawar. Um, I'm a 25 plus year resident of, of Lewiston Auburn. Uh, I came to Maine for college, uh, fell in love with Maine, and then uh, wound up finding a wife and raising a family right, right here in Lewiston Auburn. Um, I have a background in sales, marketing, and operations, uh, and I joke with people that that's about sales is building relationships, marketing is telling great stories, and operations is trying to get stuff done. Uh, and I hope to bring some of that experience uh, to the table. Um, I'm most proud, though, um, in that I have 10 years experience with the United Way on impact councils. And impact councils are basically, uh, pro it, it's a program where you get to review and work with nonprofits to deliver funding that the United Way has raised, okay? Um, into those programs so that they can get good stuff done. Good stuff such as um, helping kids be healthy, good stuff such as taking care of the homeless and things like that. And I say that not because I want to be a United Way spokesperson. I, I have huge respect for them, but I say it because I've had an opportunity to work with 50, 60 different nonprofits over the last 10 years and seen some incredible work by very dedicated people who are really unsung in their effort. Um, and ultimately, it culminates with helping kids and keeping the school and the community strong. Um, if elected, my goal is to build bridges, bring the best out of the school programs as we can and try to move the school forward so that Lewiston rises up and uh, you know has the pride that it, that it should and is up. Thank you so much, Edward, we appreciate it. We'll now hear from our final Ward 2 candidate, Jamie Simpson. Jamie Simpson, welcome. Hi. Am I on? You are. Yep. You're alive. Awesome. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Jamie Sun. I was born in Rumford and have been a resident of Lawson for the last 17 years. I have two boys, one that just graduated last year and one that's due to graduate this year and numerous nieces and nephews that are coming through the school system as we speak. I'm embarrassed to say that my first school board meeting was in just August of this year. And six weeks later, I was running for school board um, due to my own research that I've done, I'm very concerned with the direction our school is going. There is indoctrination taking place, and my concern is that not enough parents are aware of what's going on. For example, there are two books in place at the Lawson High School right now, um, Gender Queer and Lawn Boy. Both books promote crude sexual activity and pedophilia, and we need to work together to stop indoctrination. Uh, we also need to find ways to support our children and our kids without ideology and work together and support all kids as equals throughout this process. I'm very humbled to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamie. We appreciate that. We're now gonna turn our attention to Ward 3, Lewiston School Committee candidates. Uh, we'll begin with Elizabeth Eames. Elizabeth, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay, 
Lewiston deserves highly dedicated officials and I will be one. I have spent the last 33 years volunteering locally while teaching college full-time and raising my child solo. Having just retired, I wish to use my energy and time to help our next generation thrive. I pledge to do all of my homework and I know there will be loads, but I'm eager to learn our system's moving parts and pressures. To me, public schools are the foundation of our democracy and collective identity. I am the proud product of a public education and my son, in fact, made his school journey from Farwell through LMS to graduate here in 2010. He had a good experience, so I have no ax to grind on his behalf. I am not volunteering to represent students like my son, but to ensure fair treatment and full success for all, especially those with various special needs, bearing in mind as we must fiscal constraints. To my eye, the current school committee exists in a bubble. I will work to create increased communication, consultation, and collaboration with staff, students, less vocal parents. I have watched recent meetings with dismay. I will strive for consensus, but should it fail, I pledge to stay cool, calm, and collected. As an anthropologist by training, I can respect divergent worldviews. That was my job. I worked hard to turn in signatures on time to the city clerk. My Thank you, Elizabeth. Your time's up, I apologize. Uh, thank you. And now we also have from Ward 3, Felicia Hinckley. She is a write-in candidate. Welcome. Good evening, Felicia. Thank you. Um, I'm Felicia. I am the write-in candidate. I am a substance use counselor. Um, I work at the Main State Prison. I'm not originally from Lewiston, um, but I have moved to Lewiston. I'm originally from a small town in the Western Mountains. I originally moved to Lewiston after high school. Uh, so I went to school at Central Maine Community College, got my associates in criminal justice. I moved away um, and then moved back again a few years later uh, for college again. Um, and then I moved away again, but eventually found my way back to Lewiston as it seems I just can't stay away um, from Lewiston. Um, as I said, I worked at the Maine State Prison. Um, I'm a substance use counselor and I also have years of experience as uh, working in the substance use field and mental health field. Um, I'm really passionate of working with children um, and education. Children are our future. I'm also an advocate um, for restorative, uh, an advocate and restorative approach to help people reintegrate into our community successfully. Um, and I'm hoping for a good election. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felicia. We appreciate that. Uh, we will acknowledge our Ward 4 candidate, who is our current committee member, Tanya Whitlow, who is running on opposed and declined to um, attend tonight. We have our Ward 5 candidate, Ashley Medina, who is running on opposed and with us this evening. Welcome, Ashley. Good evening. Hello, and thank you. It's good to see everybody here tonight. Uh, my name is Ashley Medina. I live in the Tree Street neighborhood with my two kids that attend Lewis and Public Schools. Um, I have been in Maine since I was three years old. I went to Lewis and Public Schools my whole life. Um, starting out, I was an ESL student. Uh, Spanish is my first language. Um, when I was 16 years old, I found out that I was pregnant and dropped out of my um, of the Lewis High School my junior year. I then uh, went to get my GED um, at five months pregnant. I graduated. Um, currently, I work with Adventist youth that are 17 to 24 that have barriers to education and employment, most of them being dropouts here in uh, the community. Um, I'm involved with healthy neighborhoods, uh, community concepts, I'm on their board. I'm very committed to my community. Um, I've had a lot of uh, very great experiences in the public school system, but also a lot of negative. Um, there were times where I as a parent addressed certain issues and felt like I wasn't heard. I felt like some like people weren't relating to me. And I've also learned um, that, you know, I'm not alone in that. Um, I really want to be a voice for teachers, parents, and students. I want to be that person that makes somebody comfortable for me that I, you know, a lot of people feel like they can't, again, they feel like they can't relate to somebody and I just want people to feel comfortable to come to me and I'm just really dedicated and hope that I'm given the opportunity to be a voice and bring a, 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 a very much needed perspective um, to the school committee. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashley. We appreciate it. We're going to turn our attention now to Ward 6, Lewiston School Committee candidates. Uh, we're going to begin first with Lee Albert. Welcome, Lee. Good evening. 
Thank you, Shana. And I want to say good evening to everyone and thank you to our hosts for making this forum possible. My name is Lee Albert and I am pleased to be running for Lewiston School Committee in Ward 6. I'm a working mom with two kids who attend Farwell Elementary School and have a vested interest in ensuring that Lewiston Public Schools remain challenging, diverse, healthy, and safe learning environments for our students, teachers, and educational staff. I believe all students have potential and deserve to have their curiosities and interests cultivated. Education is this country's greatest strength and the Lewiston community's background. Strong public schools are key to our city's future and economic vitality. I seek to serve all Lewiston citizens, specifically my Ward 6 neighbors, in this critical role through careful listening, strategic thinking, intentional decision making, thoughtful planning, and wise fiscal management. I have nearly two decades of program management experience along with significant budget and resource oversight as vice president for enrollment at Bates and treasurer of our local YWCA. I proudly attended public schools and my husband is a Lewiston native, local business owner and diehard Blue Devil. Our parents taught us both the importance of families being involved in their children's education and in making our schools stronger. So together, we are deeply dedicated to the future of Lewiston schools and are committed to seeing our community thrive. I, Lee Albert, promise to serve Lewiston as the compassionate, steady, and visionary leader I am. Your children, our teachers, and Lewiston public. Thank you so much, Lee. We appreciate that. Our next candidate from Ward 6 this evening that we'll be hearing from is Megan Hurd. Megan, welcome. Good evening. Hi. Megan, it appears that we're having a little bit of, check your microphone. You are unmuted. I think it's just a microphone issue. Try again. We now? Yes, thank yes, you. Good, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be brief. Um, my name is Megan Hurd. I am a life um, time mater and passionate mother of two. I'm excited to be running for the Ward 6 school, school committee seat. Our family has lived in Lewiston for more than half a century. The people of Lewiston um, are not just our community, but our family, which is one reason I am so passionate to make sure our kids have the maximum opportunities we can provide. The children of our community are tomorrow's leaders. When elected, I will advocate for them as I would advocate for my own children. I hope to bring a non-biased, fact-based approach to every matter that comes before the committee. I will advocate for our students' best interests, parent involvement in decision-making and individual freedom. I will work with my fellow committee members to lower admin costs, flow more money to our classrooms and can control education costs to give property tax relief to families and the elderly. Mental health and suicide prevention education is a priority for me. We must bring appropriate resources to our high school and middle school coaching staff. Our coaches and athletic staff sometimes spend more time with our children <clears throat> than we do. This program will offer them the steps that they need to offer help when needed. In short, I am running for school committee as an engaged parent, an involved community member, and a longtime taxpayer. I hope that I can help improve the outcomes for your opportunities for your children. Thank you so much, Megan. We appreciate it. We're going to turn our attention to Ward 7 next for the Lewiston School Committee. We'll begin uh, with committee member Paul Boferplant. Welcome, Paul. Thank you for joining tonight. And thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Paul Bobelant, and I'm running for the Ward 7 School Committee seat. I currently occupy that position as I was appointed to fill a vacancy in January by Mayor Mark Kerr and was unanimous, unanimously approved by the City Council. I feel I bring an important perspective to school committee work as I've been a classroom teacher for 43 years at Edward Little High School across the river. Uh, being an educator, my only special interest is to give the students of Lewiston the best educational opportunities possible. And this can occur when we enable our educators to do what they love to do and do, <clears throat> excuse me, do so well, teach. My wife and I have been residents of Ward 7 for those 43 years, and our two adult son successes are attributable to the K through 12 educational experiences they have received from Lewiston Public Schools. The focus of the school committee should be on those students and programs that have been underserved for the last year and a half. All of our attention and effort should be on a return and continuation to the normalcy of full-time direct instruction. 
sacrifices must be made by all parties to keep this going. I bring no political, social, or economic agenda to this election. I hope to represent all of my constituents through an open mind and hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. We appreciate that. Our next Ward 7 candidate uh, for school committee is Heather Benson. Heather, welcome. Good evening, and thank you for putting this together. Um, my name is Heather Benson. I'm running for school committee Ward 7. I've lived in Lewiston for the last 19 years and have two students at Lewiston High School. Um, I've been volunteering in my children's classroom since they were in preschool. I'm the former PTA president at Farwell for many years. I'm currently the vice president of the Lewiston High School Football Boosters. Um, I am passionate about giving our children the best quality education that we can. Um, also retaining our very talented teachers and giving them the support that they need. I also strongly advocate for parent involvement in their children's educations. I think that that's one of the best ways to make our kids successful. And I would continue to encourage that. Um, as a taxpayer, I'm interested in responsible budgeting and balancing what our students and our teachers and schools need with what our taxpayers can afford. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. I appreciate that. Finally, we're going to turn our attention to the at-large candidates for Lewiston School Committee. This evening, that will begin with Jason Lavoy. Jason, welcome. Good evening, and thank you for having me tonight. I'd like to thank Lewiston Sun Journal and the Lewiston Library and the Chamber of Commerce for hosting us all tonight and for all of you for attending. My name is Jason Lavoy. I'm running for the Lewiston School Committee at large. Now, Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I believe all LPS students are our best weapon. The best weapon we can give them is a great education. Whether through poetry or sports, they have proved time and again that they are the best we have to offer, but we need to change the course. Just a bit. I have an, I'm an out-of-the-box thinker and I bring a new perspective and fresh ideas to the table. I've worked in LPS since 2017 and I work as an ed tech in Auburn. I will use my experience to bring an educator's voice to the table. Change begins with us working together to make Lewiston schools the strongest they can possibly be. Thank you. I look forward to your discussion tonight. I look forward to your vote on November 2nd. Thank you so much, Jason. And finally, uh, our last at-large school committee candidate and current committee chair, Megan Parks. Megan, welcome. Good evening. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Megan Parks. I was born and raised here in Lewiston and I'm a Lewiston Public Schools graduate. I am a small business owner operating a private practice as a mental health and substance use clinician here in Lewiston. And I have previously worked here in the Lewiston community as a cultural case manager, a crisis cl clinician, a restorative practice coordinator, and as a general ed and special ed ed tech in Lewiston and Auburn schools. I am a working mom to two Lewiston Public Schools children and a foster parent. And after several years of active involvement in our schools, I was encouraged to run for school committee six years ago. And I have served as the at-large rep since that time. I am currently the chair of the committee and I also serve on the Lewiston Area Public Health Committee, the Poverty Committee, the City Spirits Equity and Diversity Committee, um, Anscoggin County Jail Board of Visitors. I am a Red Cross Disaster Response Volunteer and I serve on the Trinity Jubilee Center's Board of Directors. Um, I was recently also accepted into the Maine Department of Education's Educators Leadership Development Program, which I'm very proud of. It's a 12-month cohort. Um, I reside in Ward 7 with my children and my husband, and thank you for having me here. Thank you so much, Megan. We appreciate that. Welcome to all of our Lewiston School Committee candidates. We're now going to turn our attention to the question and answer portion of our evening. We'll begin with the first question, which all of our um, attendees tonight for Lewiston School Committee have an opportunity to provide a 30 second response for. We'll follow the same order that we did for introductions. The first question is, given recent divisive behavior at times within our city councils and school boards, how do you envision being able to work together for the overall benefit of our communities? 
We're going to welcome back Matt and start with him, our Ward 1 candidate. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Um, I think that many people have spoken about respect and listening, but I think something that I think we could do is also think about the structures in which we have our conversations. We often have them by talking at each other and not thinking about what it means to have difficult conversations across difference in an ongoing way where we sit down with each other to listen and share and begin to understand each other. So I would hope that perhaps we might move into a space where we offer more of that opportunity as we go forward. Thank you, Matt, we appreciate that. Next, we'll move to our Ward 2 current committee member, Janet Bowden. Janet, you also have 30 seconds to respond to this question. It will remain on the screen for you. Thank you. Um, so being um, a representative who has served on one of these um, sometimes advice and boards, um, I think that um, just having an open mind and showing respect to one another um, makes a huge difference. Um, also having a chair uh, like Megan Parks who um, puts together different community events for us to bond together. Um, it's made a world of difference in uh, recent days. So I would like to see more of that continue. Thank you, Janet, we appreciate that. Uh, our second Ward 2 candidate is Edward. Edward, welcome back. You also Thank have you. 30 seconds to respond. You're welcome. The question will remain there for you. Um, so I, I have a, you know, I have a sense that, well, I'll go to what my dad used to say. My dad used to say, level heads prevail and calm voices are heard. And I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, I think the, the way to work through our disagreements is not to let them percolate into fights. Uh, you, we can vigorously disagree. We can vigorously stand by our beliefs and what we're trying to do. But ultimately, we have to look at the goal, which is keeping the school healthy, keeping the kids in school. And Thank you, Edward. 30 seconds is a hard one. Uh, our... Uh, third Ward 2 candidate to respond to this question is Jamie Simpson. Welcome back, Jamie. Thank you. Um, we need to focus more on working together and meeting in the middle with each other versus being on the far left or the far right. We literally need to meet in the middle. Patience, openness, and just being mindful of everybody, regardless of what it shall be, is the left and the right need to go. It needs to be focused on the middle. It has to be compromise. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. We appreciate that response. Our Ward 3 candidates response will begin with Elizabeth Eames. Welcome back, Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh, I think, of course, respect and tolerance and understanding and listening are absolutely required. But I think we need to work towards an understanding of the emotional source of the difference. Somebody has a strong opinion. It comes from an emotional place. And so, um, so that's important to figure out how to understand. And then you need to ask for the reasons for people's votes. We need to talk about the reasons we're voting one way or another and using facts and data. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate that. Our uh, second Ward 3 candidate is Felicia Hinckley. Felicia, you will also have 30 seconds to respond to this question. It will remain on the screen for you. Thank you. Um, I'm fairly new to this, but with any team, um, and something that I've learned in my line of work is the key is effective communication, um, being open-minded. And I think with the school committee, it's, it's very important to kind of check politics at the door. I don't think it's a place for politics. And remember that our focus is on the students and their education. Damn. Where are you? Thank you, Felicia. Sounds like you're doing double duty tonight. We appreciate you making time to be with us. Sorry. We're now going to welcome, <laughs> I'm a mother too. We're now going to welcome uh, our Ward 5 candidate, Ashley Medina. Ashley, welcome back. Thank you. Um, so I think it's so important that people um, take the time to be very open-minded and listen. Um, I think it's important to remember that we all have our own experiences. We come from different backgrounds. Um, and it's so important to me that everybody, you know, we have to meet in the middle. We are all doing this work for uh, a reason of giving back to the community and, you know, to do good in the community. So just keeping that in mind and working together um, is, to me, so important. So thank you. Thank you, Ashley. 
We're going to shift to our Ward 6 responses, and we're going to begin our Ward 6 response with Lee Albert. Welcome back, Lee. Thank you, Shana. I will respond to this question by saying that I will work collaboratively. That's what I'm known for. It's how I function in the world. I'll continue to listen well, seek ways to hear voices, perspectives where the diversity of our community is truly our strength and want to build upon that. I'll do my research to know the facts and lead with the facts and always will keep students at the core of our decisions where they are the reason we're here. Thank you, Lee. Our second Ward 6 candidate this evening that we'll hear from is Megan Hurd. Welcome back, Megan. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much. Um, so I think we need to remember that we are a team, um, which means we need to work together for one common goal, um, which is the future leaders of our city, our children. Um, we need to remember that every voice should be heard and respected, um, regardless of your opinion and how you personally feel about it. Um, and just keep in mind that everyone has very strong opinions um, and we need to um, check the politics at the door not bring them into our sessions. Thank you, Megan. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to move uh, to our final ward before our at-large candidates will be heard from. We're gonna start with Ward 7's committee member, Paul. Paul, welcome back. Thank you very much. When I taught across the river, I used to promote an axiom that I'd call the six C's of group success. Of course, easier said than done. We need to have civility, a mutual respect. We need to have cohesion, a unity and a bonding. Our communication needs to be open and honest. Our cooperation needs to be there. We need to work together. There needs to be consensus, which is an eventual uh, agreement. We're going in the same direction. And the most important one, compromise. Genghis Khan once said, only a fool would fight a battle he can't win. And that says Thank you, Paul. Well done with seven C's in 30 seconds. Uh, we're now going to hear from Heather Benson, our second Ward 7 candidate. Welcome back, Heather. Thank you. I think we need to remember that student success is our number one goal, so we need to actively listen to all the opinions and stakeholders to make the best decisions we can. We need to respect those with opposing views and be willing to make compromises where it's appropriate. And we also need to remember that our students are watching and we need to set the example that we want them to follow. Thank you, Heather. We're gonna round out our responses to the first question with our at-large candidates. Jason Lavoie, we'll begin with you. The question will remain on the screen. You do have 30 seconds to respond. Awesome question. And I will approach this issue the way I approach things in the classroom. As a past Lewiston Public Schools educator, and now an educator in Auburn Public Schools, everything with an open mind and an open heart, and the ability to listen to all stakeholders, no matter what their opinions. At the end of the day, I may not always agree, but I can civilly get along with everybody, all stakeholders, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And finally, we'll hear from Committee Chair Megan Parks the final at-large candidate for the first question this evening. Welcome back, Megan. Thank you again. Um, I think that as leaders in our community, when we're elected, we're, we're not just leaders for the whole community, but we're leaders for our students who do pay attention to our school committee meetings. Um, and effective leadership is based on relationship building. So I always focus, focus on building genuine and positive connections with the school committee, city council, and the community as a whole. Um, I'm also an unenrolled candidate and I pride my pride myself on my ability to hear all sides of discussions and make decisions based on our students' needs and not on personal or political biases. And politics have no place. Thank you, Megan. Uh, it's tough there at the end, but I think you got most of it in. We're, uh, we'd like to thank all of our candidates for their response to the first question. We're now going to move into the second question of our Q&A portion. This question, each candidate in the same order will have one full minute to respond to. It will appear on your screen and remain there so that you can reference it throughout. The question is, what do you see as the city's most significant education-related challenge? And how do you hope to impact that issue in your term? We're gonna begin this again with Ward 1, Matthew. Matthew, welcome back. Thank you. Um, I think we have two and I think they're interlinked. Um, 
I think that we need to continue to work on addressing issues of equity and access. And that when we do that work and create safe and safe, welcoming and supportive environments for all of our students, especially those who are most at risk, it um, put that in the wrong order, it benefits the whole population. And in that regard, I think that if we can better support workplace, uh, sorry, workforce development, both in the uh, growth of a number of our teachers, the development of those teachers, the retention of our teachers, that that has a direct impact on the quality of the educational experience that our students have. So whatever I can do to support our administration and help move our community to a place where we can achieve those things is what I would like to do. Thank you, Matt. We're gonna welcome back now uh, committee member Janet Bowden from Ward 2. Janet, you'll have a full minute to respond to this question. Sure. Um, so for me, I think that finding good teachers and keeping good teachers in our district is um, a pretty significant challenge that we're having right now. We have a lot of open positions. Um, we need to be able to offer them competitive pay while keeping um, our budget at a sustainable amount. Um, and this is just proving to be a, a giant hurdle that we're facing right now in our school system. Um, there's obviously a lot of things with our children um, that come to mind as well. Just, you know, graduation rates, keeping them in school, their emotional um, and social health. Um, there's, there's a lot to tackle right now. There's an endless list. Um, but I think um, our, our biggest challenge right now is finding good teachers and keeping good teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Uh, our second Ward 2 candidate that we'll hear from is Edward Jawar. Edward, welcome back. The question will remain on the screen for you and you do have a full minute to respond. There are a lot of, there are a lot of things going on in the school district. There are a lot of things going on in Lewiston. Um, I think in the, the teachers and educators I've talked to, the biggest challenge right now is funding because funding and wages is really driving retention and recruiting teachers. Uh, we have a teacher crisis, basically, and I'm hearing this directly from other teachers. Uh, because of the shortage of, of staff, class sizes are greater, there's less access for teachers, for students, it, it, it's got a compounding problem. Um, how do we get through that? It's not just a near-term problem, it's a long-term problem as well, because funding is limited. We don't have endless resources uh, to just throw at this, if you will. Um, my hope is if elected, we can, we can maybe start thinking creatively and start trying to think of this issue as how do we get the outside resources that we need and bring those resources into Lewiston instead of continuing to tax Lewiston to try to bring ourselves up on our own. I think there's federal money to do that. Thank you, Edward. Our uh, final candidate from Ward 2 is Jamie Simpson. Jamie, welcome back. Thank you very much. Um, my biggest concern is being able to keep the kids in school versus doing the homeschooling, which was a huge challenge last year. Um, we need to fix this, definitely fix the shortage of teachers. Um, we also need to focus on keeping the kids safe and to protect them. The biggest challenge is keeping the teachers teaching, fix the shortage of teachers, but it also fixing the teacher problem. We also need to be able to keep the student body functioning at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. We're now gonna hear from our Ward 3 candidates, the same response to the question above. We're going to begin with Elizabeth Eames. Welcome back, Elizabeth. You do have a full minute to respond to this question. Thank you. Um, so I think COVID learning loss is, not is a major issue and also that it is not equally distributed across the student body. Uh, so I think we need to pay attention to social and emotional learning for everyone but especially the marginalized and disadvantaged students that we have. Um, and I would like to say that I'm the only name on the ballot in Ward 3, so all you have to do is mark off the name supplied to you, which is Elizabeth, Elizabeth Eames. Elect Elizabeth. Thank you, Elizabeth. We do have another candidate from Ward 3. They are a write-in candidate. That is Felicia Hinckley. Felicia, welcome back. Happy to hear your response for this question. So we do have a full minute to respond. Thank you for that. 
Um, I would say one of our biggest issues, I think, with our youth is the use of substance use, um, especially at such a young age. Oh, sorry about that. Um, young brains are very impressionable, and any use of substances can have long-term effects, um, many long-term effects. Um, their brains are, when they're youth, their brains are prime stages of development, which is negatively affected by the use of substances. And this can have a snowball effect that can include emotional stunting, unfinished education, criminal behavior, among many other things. And I'm hoping that, you know, if elected, I can bring knowledge from my many years of experience in the mental health field and the substance use field, as well as my work in the correction system to work with the team in decreasing the use of substances with our youth. Thank you, Felicia. I know the timer didn't move on that one. But I know that you were under time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, th thank you for doing that. We appreciate it. We're now going to, to welcome back Ashley Medina. Ashley, uh, you will have a full minute for this question and that question will remain on the screen for you the entire time. Welcome. Thank you again, Shanna. Um, so I can echo a lot of what a lot of people have already stated, um, but one of my biggest things is I feel like teachers um, need more support in the classrooms. Um, teachers, especially in, uh, in my community, um, are dealing with kids that are living in poverty, trauma, um, and a lot of different things going on at home. Um, I feel like teachers need more support um, in order for them to be able to teach and um, be effective you know, they just need more resources, um, maybe more behavioral management, more perspective. And, and so that's where I feel um, I can bring a voice um, to, to everybody involved. Um, so, and also just keeping our students in school and keeping them safe throughout this whole uh, COVID thing. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ashley, we appreciate that. We're now gonna shift to the responses from our Ward 6 Lewiston School Committee candidates, should anyone have just joined us. We're gonna begin that with Lee Albert, Welcome, Lee. Thank you, Shana. Uh, and thinking about our biggest educational challenge, I also see it as an opportunity. Uh, Lewiston is one of the largest school districts in the state, one of the most diverse school districts in the state. And as such, we have a wide spectrum of students that our teachers and educational professionals need to attend to. And they have a wide range of abilities along with aspirations, both academically and co-curricularly outside of the classroom. So, that means a lot of program development. Therefore, we need greater support for our teachers to make sure they're equipped and have the resources to attend to all of these students and their needs. Intertwined in all of this is their mental well being, social emotional learning, when we think about diverse backgrounds and their identity. So, I am most eager to work collaboratively to find ways to make sure our students have the support and our teachers have the support uh, to make sure their needs are met. Thank you, Lee. Uh, next, our last candidate from Ward 6 with us this evening is Megan Hurd. Megan, welcome back. You'll have a full minute to respond to this question. Thank you, Shana. Um, so I think one of our significant challenges um, is bringing more trade programs um, to our schools. Um, those blue collar jobs, that's what our community was built on. Um, we need to offer those again, bring them back into the schools, um, offer them to students um, who may not look at going on to a four year or two year degree as is an option for them, um, giving them something um, so that they can support themselves, um, add to our community, support our community, support a family of their own one day. Um, I really think that those basic life skills are something um, that our youth are missing these days. And I think we need to really bring that back um, and focus on that in the future. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that, Megan. Next to Ward 7, uh, we're going to begin our Ward 7 response with committee member Paul. Paul, welcome back. You also you. have a full minute. Being near the end of the uh, line for candidates, it seems like many of the significant challenges have been already identified. So I feel a little bit like being at a, at a buffet. I'll have a little of this, a little of that, a little of that. I would like to echo uh, Ms. Simpson uh, Ward 2 that we need to keep kids in school. My motto or mantra would be kids first. Uh, we have things that we can work on, improve that are already good. We have a really good showcase program for the Lewiston Regional Technical uh, Program. Uh, they've got a great culinary outfit with the, with a green label. Uh, 
Uh, we need to expand the vocational programs. I had to hire a plumber and there's nothing, no stigma in being a plumber, believe me. Uh, we're not in the 1950s with mom, pop, and the 2.5 kids, and everybody goes to college. We need to take over some of the responsibilities of the family. We must make sure that students are fed. We need to, again, expand the successful summer school. We need to expand the uh, alternative programs as well. Thank you, Paul. Our second Ward 7 candidate is Heather Benson. Heather, welcome back. You also will have a full minute to respond. Um, I think there are so many challenges in Lewiston that it's hard to um, say that one is the biggest, but I think right now, the disruption of the past 18 months has really impacted our students. Um, we need to do all we can to get our kids re-engaged in school and excited about learning again and caught up on the things that they missed out on. Um, I would hope to help identify their needs and provide support to our teachers and staff to keep the kids engaged. Um, and I would just say for anyone in Ward 7, if you'd like to have a conversation at any time, please contact me and we can do that. And I would very much appreciate your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. We're going to end this evening with our at-large candidates. First, we'll hear from Jason Lavoy, his response to this question. Jason. Great. Yeah, obviously, Lewiston does face significant challenges, and many of them have been addressed tonight. So I'll use my time talking about a big challenge that affects not only our local government, our state government, our national uh, national picture, but our whole world, and that's the issue of climate change. Uh, it affect, uh, We have a, uh, a duty to protect our environment as a uh, as a school department and as a um, as a city. And I believe that climate change is one of the biggest issues facing our nation and our local government. And I will work tirelessly to make sure that climate change is addressed as well as the many issues that have been addressed by many people, SEL and learning loss during COVID and uh, improving special ed as well. So uh, climate change is one of the biggest issues facing our country and our local government right now. Thank you, Jason. And last of the evening, we'll hear from current committee chair, Megan Parks. Megan, you will thank take you. us out with this question uh, for which you will also have a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Um, some of our biggest challenges um, right now are remediation and learning loss recovery from the pandemic and remote learning last year, um, as well as addressing the high number of students we have in our schools that live in poverty and supporting them and their teachers in order to reach success. Um, we have to work on continuing the hard work towards equity and inclusion in our schools and, and the community as a whole. Six years ago, when I first started on the school committee, I initiated work on implementing a statement of equity. Um, it has finally, within the last year, been adopted by both Lewiston and Auburn City Councils, as well as the school committee. Um, and moving forward, we need to start putting this into practice. Um, we need to start hiring school staff that mirror our student body. We need to rewrite our policies in a way that respects our diversity and encourages all students um, to learn and progress and succeed. Um, and special ed, we're working on that right now, uh, addressing the, the def def deficiencies in our special ed department. Um, and I think that wraps it up. Thank you all for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Megan. I hope each of you at home tonight are applauding all of our candidates from both Lewiston and Auburn for all of the races. They took time tonight to prepare uh, and spend this evening with you to share their thoughts and what they hope we might be able to achieve together. Um, it is always important to engage in civil discourse and in supporting our local government. Uh, here at the Chamber of Commerce, we're an organization founded more than 140 years ago on the belief that there is a role for us to advocate for the things we'd like to see in the societies that we live in. You've all done a part of that tonight, both by running for office uh, or showing up tonight and being an informed voter. So we do hope that you vote. Election day is November 2nd. Absentee ballots are currently available and will remain available through 4 p.m. on October 28th. I would also like to just genuinely thank tonight's sponsors. Uh, we worked with the Auburn and Lewiston Public Libraries, had significant support from the Sun Journal, um, both Judy with her moderation, as well as Strawberry playing a significant tech role behind the scenes tonight, and to the Lewiston-Auburn Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce. 
you will be able to see recordings of tonight's forum on each of our sites in the coming days. We encourage you to follow the coverage of the campaign and review the candidates' profiles, staying informed through the Sun Journal. It is a special thanks tonight that we do give to Strawberry um, for all of her skill. Judy, is there any parting words that you would like to say this evening before we wish everyone a good night? No, just to thank everybody. I know this was a long evening, but we had a really good and healthy discussion and, and I hope that um, the community is paying attention. Agreed. I don't know that I've ever seen so much attention paid to education, both in the city council and school committee and school committee races across both sides of the river. We're excited uh, with the needs of our workforce to see you all paying that attention and wish all of the candidates well and a good campaign. Have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Judy and Shanna. You're welcome. And Strawberry nice and everyone all. else. <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night.